Hello, hello, good afternoon. So, when uh, we were going through the program committee to put together the program for this event, uh, we had a lot of very good talks, we had a lot of very good entertainment, and we had a couple of things that we looked at and we're like, this is kind of halfway between the two. <laughs> And one of those was uh, Martin submitted a what was just going to be like a talk about technical leadership lessons from Disney princesses. And somewhere in the abstract, I think you mentioned you were going to play some music. And uh, so I said to him, well, you know, we've got quite a lot of people there who can sing. What if you do the talk, but then for the musical bits, we're going to get some of our other speakers to get up and do guest vocals on those. So we are now going to do something, a little bit of lunchtime leadership musical Disney princess themed karaoke entertainment for you. And please welcome the person who almost all of this is their fault, Martin Mazur. Thank you so much. So this talk is about three things. It's First of all, about Disney princesses. Secondly, it's about technical leadership. And lastly, it's a little bit about learning and how we learn. So when you leave today, you will, be, uh, you will feel entertained. And hopefully, you'll also learn something new about technical leadership. Or actually, leadership in general. You will also learn uh, how learning actually happens and how you can exploit that fact. So my name is Martin Masur. I'm the Chief Product and Technology Officer at Trend37. I've been in the software industry for you know, about 20 years now. In the last seven of them, I've spent mentoring and coaching uh, and developing technical leaders, both inside of our company and with our clients. So before we jump into the Disney princesses, I want to touch a little bit on the learning aspect, right? So there is a slight difference between learning and studying. So studying is the deliberate act supposed to create learning, right? While learning is this passive thing that happens all the time and you can't really stop it. So to give you an example, I studied German for three years in school as a kid. And then in high school, I studied German for another three years. They actually moved me back to beginner's class because uh, I was that bad at German. My German is still really, really bad. I literally don't understand German. On the other hand, I learned English before I even started school. And mind you, none of my parents at the time knew any English at all. So how did I learn that? I learned it from watching cartoons on TV. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, He-Man. That was the stuff that taught me English. So that's learning. Learning happens all the time. You know, we just can't stop it. And often we don't see it that way because we've been led to believe that learning will actually happen through studying. How, uh, so if you think you can't learn anything about technical leadership from Disney princesses, strap yourself in. It's going to be a fun ride. We're going to have music. Let's jump to the first Disney princess, one of my absolute favorites, Tiana from Princess and the Frog. So, the story of Tiana starts when she's just a little girl. She's not even a princess. She comes from humble backgrounds. Mind you, she's pretty well connected because her mother works as a seamstress for all of the wealthy people in Louisiana. And as Tiana grows up, she's inherited this one thing from her father, who's no longer with them, the passion for food, right? She loves to cook, and her only dream is to start her own restaurant. But, you know, Tiana's not the type of woman to go around believing in fairy tales, you know, if you wish upon a star, it's going to happen. No, no, no. She knows uh, that uh, the only way this is going to happen is hard work. So Tiana works every night as a waitress at restaurants in New Orleans and saves up all her tip money because that's how you reach your goals. And with that, let's welcome up our first artist. It's 
not my style This whole town can slow you down People taking an easy way But I know exactly where I'm going I'm closer, closer every day And I'm almost there Almost there People down here think I'm crazy But I don't care Trials and tribulations I've had my share There now we go Stop me now Cause I'm almost there I remember that it told me Fair things can come true You're gonna make them happen It all depends on you So I walk with And she was, Tiana was almost there, right? She was almost there getting her restaurant. But the thing that happened was even though she didn't believe in fairy tales, all of a sudden this uh, frog appears, right? As she's on a masquerade ball. And for some weird reason, she goes like, hey, might as well kiss the frog, even though as she as a child said, she would never kiss a frog. This frog actually happens to be a prince. The only problem is Tiana's not a princess. So the whole spell kind of backfires and turns Tiana into a frog. Both these frogs go on this crazy adventure to find Mama Odie in the Louisiana Bayou, who can supposedly turn them back into humans, and as fairy tales go, fall in love. And eventually they do get turned back into humans, and Tiana does get her restaurant. Not because she married a prince, no, no, this prince, he was totally broke, but because of the hard work that she put in to save up the money and realize her dream. So what's the leadership lesson I'm trying to teach you here? Well, it's to respect the grind. So leadership for me is about facilitating the voluntary movement of people. So you have one direction and you want a group of people to kind of follow you and go in that direction and accomplish a task. Specifically, when we move into technical leadership, we're used to really quick feedback loops. We're talking about red-green refactor, or in software engineering, things either work or they don't work. When you work with people, it's a little bit harder, right? The feedback loop loops are much smaller, uh, longer. And people work, it takes a long time. So the leadership lesson here is don't turn too many knobs. If you do coaching, mentoring, or give advice, you have to let that change percolate to see the results. You can't just expect immediate results when you're dealing with teams and people. So respect the grind. Next one we're going into is Rapunzel. Oh, this is a crazy story, specifically when you view it from a, weird, from a little bit different angle. So one thing about Rapunzel is the king and queen, before Rapunzel is, is married, actually steal a magical flower from nature and take it to, for their own. That, that's weird to me, right? They, they're supposedly they would be the villains. Mother Gothel, who's been letting this flower grow in the wild, and she's been caring for it and keeping it hidden from everyone, maybe just so they wouldn't take it. And of course, she's been using its power. Uh, of course, she gets pretty angry when they steal the flower. Of course, they stole the flower because the queen was dying and she had an unborn baby on the way, so you know, they needed its magic to save her. 
What Mother Gothel then kind of figures out is that the magical powers from the flower have been passed on to the princess, Rapunzel, as she's born. So she does the only logical thing, right? She steals the baby. All right, that's, that's not okay. And she takes the baby and locks it up into a tower and raises it as her own. Uh, granted that Mother Gothel does not have any motherly instincts. She's not really that good at raising children. The thing that's really weird about Rapunzel is that she doesn't change the baby's name and she doesn't change its date of birth. You would think if you kidnap a baby, you would try to kind of remove those identifiers, right? No, she doesn't. And this is significant to the story because every day on the birthday of Rapunzel, there's these magical lights that float in the air and it's all the people in the kingdom lighting lights in the hope to find Rapunzel again. So her only dream is to go and see the lights up close, right? Because she knows there's something there. But Mother Gothel makes sure to use every gaslighting technique in the book to make Rapunzel stay in the tower. And stay she does. Well, until she doesn't. Because there's this criminal who somehow makes it into the tower. Yay security, right? And Rapunzel figures out this plan to get Mother Gothel to go somewhere else and convinces the criminal to take her to see the lights. As stories go, they eventually fall in love. Rapunzel returns to the kingdom, Mother Gothel is defeated, and she marries the criminal. Weird story, I was telling you. So, what's the lesson here? Lead yourself first. The thing is, if you in your career haven't come across a Mother Gothel yet, you probably will. They're spread out there everywhere in organizations. People there to uh, gaslight you and put you down and use you for their own winnings. And the more into leadership you get, the more of these people are going to be around you, right? So the thing you need to do is develop this way of listening to your own inner leader, right? Know where you want to go, like Rapunzel. She wants to go and see the lights. Um, and know what you want to do. You also objectively need to start judging your own work. You need to look at it and they say, like, am I measuring up to my own standards? Because with leadership work, since it's not binary, there's always something to criticize. There's always something to put down. And lastly, you have to lean on your own self-worth uh, and your own self-validation. Because the higher up in leadership you get, the less external validation there will be for you. Right? There might be people coming up saying, good job eventually, but you know, those things go away. Uh, trust me, I did nine months as a CEO. You know, very few people tell you you're doing a good job. Uh, so you need to find ways to self-validate. All right, moving on to the next one. I love this movie, Mirabelle, Encanto. It's a brilliant movie in so many ways. Uh, but for the ones that haven't seen it, Mirabelle, she's part of this Colombian family called uh, the Madrigals. Everyone in the family gets a special power on their fifth birthday, like cool powers. Super hearing, super strength, they able, uh, they're able to summon flowers or look into the future. Everyone except Mirabelle. So, naturally, Mirabelle struggles to find her way into this family where everybody has these extraordinary superpowers but uh, extraordinary superpowers. And on the surface, this family looks perfect, but underneath, there's, uh, this is a highly dysfunctional family. Again, you know, maybe what family isn't? So what Mirabelle discovers is that the magic from the house that they're living in, Casita, and uh, from the family is slowly fading. And she tries to bring this up into to the light, but nobody listens to her, nobody listens to Mirabelle. So she goes off on, on uh, her own journey to restore the magic. And throughout this, she gets her family to tell, well, usually sing about their troubles and worries and everything. And uh, she learns, uh, she eventually learns that her lack of magic abilities doesn't really define her. Her gift is something else. Her gift is this incredible empathy and ability to heal emotional wounds in her family. So with the family's love and long-lost cousin returns and everything, uh, Mirabelle's unique power becomes this way of tying the family together. Uh, 
The story ends with Mirabelle embracing her new role as heart of the family, and the Madrigals thrive together, embracing all of their imperfections. So, classical leadership tale, right? Because the truth is, just like Mirabelle, a lot of great leaders don't really have any superpowers. They're, they're just generalists. Either by choice, you know, they became generalists and then moved into leadership, uh, or by chance, you know, they started with leadership and eventually became generalists, because that's where you end up. What they do have is this uncanny ability to unlock other people's full potential and coach them over their hurdles. Uh, but it's also uh, daunting as a leader, and you sometimes doubt yourself and want to go like, so what's my super skill? What's my superpower? The thing to remember is that as a leader, your role is to be a catalyst. Uh, in the greater scheme of things, it's more important to develop uh, the people around you because it has greater impact on the work you're doing. So it's less important what you know and do than what the people you lead know and do. Right? Here's a, it, Elsa's a classic by now, right? Here's a story about Elsa uh, from Frozen. I'm guessing everybody knows this, but I'm just going to do a quick refresher. When the story begins, Elsa is just this little girl with ice powers, right? And she does what any little child with ice powers would do, goes around and plays with them, creates magical snowmen and sled rides and everything, and through this play, she mistakenly uh, hurts her sister really badly. So badly that her family has to take her sister and rush her off to the trolls, because apparently trolls are the thing that can fix magical wounds. So the trolls go all men in black on Anna, her sister, and erase her memory of Elsa's superpowers. And all is well, other than that Elsa is deeply emotionally scarred by this event and, and you know, hides herself away in her room, not showing her powers to anyone, specifically not Anna, leaving her sister wondering what the hell happened. Later, her parents die in a tragic accident, and Elsa, as the eldest, is set out to be uh, crowned as the queen. During her coronation, she struggles to keep her powers in check and inadvertently plunges the whole kingdom into an eternal winter. Instead of dealing with it, Elsa just, um, you know, flees out into the mountains uh, to live in isolation, right? Welcome up, Eli, for uh, the next act. <laughs> wide on the mountain tonight not a footprint to be seen a kingdom of isolation and it looks like I'm the queen the wind is howling like this swirling storm inside couldn't keep it in heaven knows I've tried don't let them in don't let them see Be the good girl you always have to be Feel, don't feel, don't let them know Well now they know Let it go, let it go Can't hold it back anymore Let it go, let it go bothered me anyway <coughs> It's funny how some distance makes everything seem small And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through No right, no wrong
steady way. All right, so as she's up in her icy castle, her sister Anna is determined to go find uh, Elsa, bring back her sister, bring back Summer, so she embarks on this crazy journey, accompanied by an ice man named Kristoff, a reindeer named Sven, and a comical snowman named Olaf, who, you know, if you've seen all the uh, behind-the-scenes footage, Elsa actually created by accident. Now, the gang face a bunch of challenges, and after all the twists and turns, it all ends happily. Not with love between a prince and a princess, but between the love between the two sisters, which I find is, is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so through this love, uh, Elsa saves Anna's life and also unfreezes the kingdom and eventually embraces her powers, but does renounce the crown and lets her sister take over instead. So it's not uncommon that leadership is something that happens to you. You maybe, specifically, you didn't decide that this was something you wanted to go into. But just like Elsa, uh, you know, something happened and all of a sudden you were there. So you might not have all the support mechanisms in place for doing the work, yet here you are. And your old mechanisms don't really work anymore because now all of a sudden you, you're leading, right? So you can't really go and blow off steam to the people that you're supposed to motivate and make sure that they're moving in the right direction, right? And as the things start piling up emotionally inside of you, you might stop functioning, you might explode, you might freeze your team into an eternal winter, right? And we don't want that happening. So what you need to do is you need to find the support mechanisms when you move into leadership. This might be coaches, mentors, there's different types of support groups, there's networks you can join. But make sure to have somewhere where you can speak with a confidant about what's going on. And also make sure to schedule the time for yourself for the activities that you enjoy. Leadership can be a 24-7 thing, but it shouldn't be. So whatever your, the things that make you happy are, make sure to set aside time for those and block them off in your calendar like the world's most important meeting. All right, so before we move on to more princesses, I want to touch a little bit again on the learning aspect. Right? The truth is that this talk wouldn't exist if it wasn't for my daughter. So she's about five and a half now, and it's not like we brought her up on Disney princesses. It was something that, you know, she kind of came up with it, and we just, you know, we're just being nice, facilitative parents. So, like, if this is what you want to get into, sure, we'll help. It's not like I hadn't seen a Disney Princess movie before my daughter was born. It's just that I hadn't seen the same movie so many times over and over again, and listened to all the songs so many times over and over again. But something happens to your brain when you're exposed to something uh, this much, right? you start making these weird connections between the things that you already know and the things that you're learning. All right? So I found myself going into work and with the people I was coaching and helping, just drawing like princess references. I was like, oh, it's just like, you know, this and this. Uh, well, that was a little bit weird. It was pretty effective. So this learning mechanism uh, is something you can actually exploit. And the way you exploit it is by not going and learning more of the same, by learning more of what you're really good at. It's about going and learning something different or trying on a different skill that you're not that good at because that's going to get your brain firing with creativity and creating new connections and new lessons for you. And this is why I find conferences really great, specifically conferences like this where we mix different topics, we mix in music, other types of activities. Right? Because there's so many cool things to choose from, so many cool things to learn. So if this is your first offbeat session for this conference, don't let it be your last. Go to things you would normally not go to. You know? Explore things. And that way you're going to be a little bit more creative and you promise you're going to learn much more than if you go deeper into the stuff you're already really good at. All right, back to the princesses. Next one in Europe is called Vajana. Everywhere else it's call, uh, she's called Moana. Reason? Copyright. Look it up. Hilarious story. 
Anyway, I'm going to say Vayana because, you know, uh, that's, that's the way I, I got to know her. So Vayana is, uh, is a princess or, a, you know, a daughter to the chief on, on a Polynesian island. And she's being trained very early on to take on the leadership when the chief dies. Chief shows her all the correct ways of doing stuff. This is the way we do it on the island. Yet, Vayana feels that, you know, maybe there's something else. Maybe we could do it differently. But she's dead, stopped dead in her tracks. One of the specific things that she wants to do differently, she wants to travel out on the ocean because she believes that that can create a different future for her people. It's forbidden to go out on the ocean, rightfully so, because the ocean is cursed and nobody goes beyond the reef. There's a dark secret that her tribe actually used to be an ocean-faring tribe, but they've hid away all the boats and erased all of that from their history. Now they're stuck on the island. Although, uh, although uh, as her island is thrust into meager times and harvests start to rot and the fish goes away from the, sea, from the ocean, Viana feels that you know, this is her time to do something. This is where she can go away. And in spite of her father's will, she travels out in the ocean uh, to go out there and see what she, what she can find. Uh, please. Have a backup for the words because they are very quick. Been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing why. I wish I could be the perfect daughter, but I come back to the water. No matter how hard I try I could wish to the trail I track Every path I make, every road leads back To the place I know where I cannot go Where I long to be See the light where the sky with the sea It calls me And no one knows how far it goes the wind in my sail on the sea stays behind me One day I know If I go there's just no telling how far I'll go I know everybody on this island Seems so happy on this island Everything is by design I know everybody on this island Has a role on this island so maybe I can roll with mine I can lead with pride I can make us strong I'll be satisfied If I play along But the voice inside Sings a different song What is wrong with me? See the light that shines on the sea It's blinding But no one knows How deep it goes Thank you. So yeah, so she goes out on the sea and eventually she figures out how to save her island. The whole story includes a self-centered, clueless demigod uh, and restoring of the heart of the land. Uh, Viana eventually realizes that what she felt was, all, uh, was right all along and uh, returns to her people to embrace their heritage, and she helps uh, lead them into a new era of exploration and discovery. Woo! There's a lot of lessons about product development in Viana, 
but this talk is not about product development. That might be another talk. This talk is about leadership. So in the case of Viana, she went against the grain. She went against what current leadership suggested to be the best practice. She had a hunch and a few pieces of evidence that what she's thinking might actually be right. And she rolled with it. She put herself on the hook, and not only herself, the whole island. If this plan would have backfired, this would have been bad both for her and for everybody else. And it's, it's important to realize that in leadership, sometimes these are the decisions you have to make. If you're just passing on orders, if you're just telling people what somebody else told you, you know, do this thing, you're not really leading, you're just managing. You have to bring your whole self to work with all of your values and believe in the things, in the directions that you're pointing, right? And then you have to take accountability for results. What that means in leadership is, if it all works out fine, your team did a great job. If it doesn't, you have to take the heat. So go on the hook for things. Next story is Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon. So and again, here's another daughter being trained by her father uh, to do stuff. This is specifically to fight, right? Because she's a protector of this holy gem. Uh, this holy gem that's keeping a plague away from the magical kingdom of Kumandra. The only problem is that Kumandra is built up of several different tribes. And all among these tribes, greed is stirring, right? Because everybody wants the gem. So the gem is put into play and eventually crushed, and the piece is distributed to all the different tribes. Which means that the gem loses its magical power, and the plague called the Droon invade all of the country, turning people into stone. Each tribe's taking a piece of the gem. With the pieces shattered uh, and her father gone, Raya decides to embark on this crazy adventure to, get, to uh, gather all the pieces together, find the last dragon, and restore Kumandra to its previous uh, glory. Throughout her journey, she gathers up a bunch of allies, right? people to help her with these, these things. This includes a child chef, a con baby uh, with some monkeys, uh, a huge but emotionally scarred warrior, and eventually her nemesis, Princess Namari. Through teamwork, they overcome their differences and they collect all of the gem pieces and reforge the dragon gem. Raya learns that unity doesn't mean erasing differences, but appreciating them and working together. Uh, the tribes reconcile and Kumandra is restored to its former glory, people starting to trust each other again. So the lesson we're talking about here is there's no such thing as a perfect team. Like even if you had the team you really, really wished for, it wouldn't be the team you really wished for. Because it's made up of individuals and there's no way you can know how those individuals are or are going to act. So as leaders, we rarely get to pick the people we lead. We kind of like Raya, we gather up the people that want to do the same thing as us. And this is now what we have to work with. So great leadership is about figuring out how to make a team from a group of individuals. And this means leading each person from where they are, not from where you are. So adapting your leadership style and your approach to each individual and giving them what they need in order to function well inside of the team, playing to their strengths and figuring out how to aid, uh, the, how, to, how to make them aid in the group dynamics. The strength in any team is very rarely in their similarities, but it's almost always in their differences. Okay, we're coming up on the last princess here, Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Mm. Sweet, naive Ariel. Now, this is an old Disney movie, so it has by far the most weirdness in it. Ariel is one of King Triton's, the king of the ocean's daughters, and she's the more curious and, curious and adventurous one, but she's obsessed with the service folk, like obsessed to the point where it's actually a little bit of a kink. It's, it's pretty weird, actually. She's collecting all of these weird artifacts and trinkets and things and, you know, making up names for them and dreaming about how it would be to walk with the surface folk. 
which her father is much against because he believes that they're dangerous. But Ariel feels that you know, everything seems to be so much better on the surface, right? And she gets a chance to fraternize with one of these humans as she saves him from a shipwreck. And then becomes even more obsessed, not only with people in general, but with this specific person. Please. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything? Look at this trove, treasures untold. How many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around here, you'd think, sure, she's got everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos and plenty. I've got who's it's and what's it galore. You want thingamabobs? I got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want. Where the people are, I wanna see, wanna see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call feet? Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing, strolling along down a street. Up where they walk, up where they run. Up where they stay all day in the sun Wandering free, wish I could be Part of that world What would I give if I could live Out of these waters What would I pay to spend a day Warm on the sand Bet you on land, they understand Bet they don't Reprimand their daughters, right young women, sick of swimming, ready to stand. And ready to know what the people know, ask them my questions and get some answers. What's a fire and why does it, what's the word, burn? When's it my turn, wouldn't I love? Love, love to explore that shore above world. Out of the sea Wish I could be Part of that world Video stopped her I'm just gonna stop there <laughs> Thank you. So we totally do reprimand our daughters. <laughs> exactly. So Ariel strikes the worst deal in history and exchanges her fins and her voice for legs. She gets three days to make this man, who has apparently no recollection of her, fall in love with her and pulls every trick in the book, including uh, getting the help of a crab and a fish, yet still fails to do so. After a few twists and turns, Ariel's father shows up and kind of fixes the situation and grants Ariel's wish to become human. She does marry Eric and unites the two kingdoms. Ariel and Eric live happily ever after, and her father eventually comes to understand that, you know, now Ariel uh, loves the human world. So, was the human world really that much better? I'm not so sure, actually. It, it wasn't really that full of wonders. It feels quite ordinary to me, but maybe it's because I live here. Um, the thing is, we're really good at making up these stories, that things are better in the other team, or uh, you know, things would look better if I was in upper management, or I'm sure they have some secret on the board level. It's usually not true, right? It's usually just stories we tell ourselves because we feel that the grass is greener on the other side. 
And the truth usually is that the people on the other side are people just like you. They have their own set of fears and worries and doubts, just like you do. And the issue with being a technical leader is that you're usually kind of stuck in between two teams, right? You, for one, have the team that you are leading, like your, your, your team, these are my people, I'm trying to get these people to move in, in a direction. If you're, say, a staff engineer, uh, then you may be also part of the CTO's team as a team member, right? Or if you're like an architect, you're doing your architectural stuff with your team, and then you're also part of some architect's board or something similar to that. Now, if those two teams don't have aligned agendas, if these two teams don't want the same thing, you're in for a world of pain. So, regardless of how hard it might be, one of your main things as a technical leader is to make crystal clear and sure that the agendas between your primary team and your secondary team are aligned. Otherwise, your work is going to be completely impossible. So just like Ariel did, you know, she found a way to kind of unite the surface people and, uh, and the ocean people into one. So this way you can be both supportive of your team and be a valuable member of the other team. So that's the last one. And as I'm finishing up, if I still have my Disney crew uh, in the crowd, everybody come up, come up. You know, it'd be Dylan, did you, could you come up? Yeah, sure. Everybody gets to be a princess. So what does it look like leading like a princess? One, you have to respect the grind. Two, you have to lead yourself first. Three, be a catalyst. Seek support. Go on the hook for the things you believe in. Adapt your style and align agendas. And I just want to thank everybody who's been a part of this. Dylan, thanks for fixing everything, making a crazy idea. Dominica, uh, Eli. Hila, Simon, thank you all for singing. Uh, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. Uh, so cool to be able to do this talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.